Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Welcome back again. This is the Open of the Earth TV, and we are back with another video for you. Um, just a quick thing, guys. I've been trying to make videos that you guys would like to see, but unfortunately, um, I make random videos, and so sometimes they get views, sometimes they don't get much. I made a video the other day about um, Seventh Day Adventists killing their own messenger, Ellen White, right here, and it had 800 plus views, or I think it was 865 last time I checked. That was a random video. So when I asked you guys in the comment section, put what kind of video you would like me to make so I can make them. It is actually important. That's why I made the video because I want to make sure people have a lot of questions. And if we can actually answer them, I want to make sure by God's grace, I can give the answer to you guys using the Bible, usually Bible only. But sometimes if it has to do with the prophecy, I may have to pull in from the writing of our messenger, Ellen G. White. Now, if you haven't done so, if it is your first time here, welcome to this channel. My name is The Open Viewer TV, at least for the channel. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and that notification bell so you can be alert when I post a new video. And if you already subscribed, thank you for your subscription. Right now, I think I'm at 61 subscribers, so that's good. I think I had uh, about 12 subscribers in the last maybe week or so. So guys, thank you for subscribing. Um, keep sending me uh, your love and support. If you have questions, you can always put it in the comment section down below. Now, let's get to the topic. Today's topic, Randy Skid. And this is actually for the young people. So, Young people, listen up because, not young people, the single one. So, listen up because this is going to be very interesting. I'm going to stop talking and let him do his thing. Let's get into it. And so for those listening online, God is very clear. But here's a real frightening statement. If you respect the writings of Ellen White, take a deep breath. Adventist Home, page 67, paragraph 1. What did I say? I'm not going to tell you. It's too rough. No, you're too young. No. Okay, you forced me. Okay. Listen carefully. To connect with an unbeliever is to place yourself on Satan's ground. You grieve the Spirit of God and forfeit his protection. What does forfeit mean? Give you give it up. You give it up. The company, you grieve you the spirit of God and forfeit his protection. <clears throat> I did not write that. Adventist Home, page 67, paragraph 1. If you are a Baptist, marry a Baptist. If you're Jehovah's Witness, marry a Jehovah's Witness. If you're Satanist, marry a demon. Are you with me? If you're not. <laughs> if, <laughs> if. Did you guys catch that? Did you guys catch what he said right here? Let me let me put it back for you again so you can so you can hear it perfectly. It's 67, paragraph one. If you are a Baptist, marry a Baptist. If you're Jehovah's Witness, marry a Jehovah's Witness. If you're Satanist, marry a demon. Are you with me? If you're not. <laughs> Basically, he said, if you are a Satanist, <laughs> so those, uh, those Masons and Satanist people, like he said, marry a demon. <laughs> 
marry a demon because that's what the, that's what is Satan. He is, he is a demon. But let him, I'm gonna let him finish cooking. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're an Adventist, come on, finish my words. Marry an Adventist. A good one. A good one. <laughs> <laughs> a good one. <laughs> I tell you. Uh, well, let me not get on that anymore. Okay, let me pause right here real quick. So he said it was in um, Adventist Home, page 67, paragraph 1. Um, actually, is it? Uh, yes, it is. And I'm going to see if I can actually show you guys what... Adventist Home, page 67, paragraph 1 actually says, because I think um, this is something I would like for you guys to actually be able to see on this end. Okay, let me... Okay, so this is Adventist Home. Oh, that's not good. Um, page 67. I didn't, I didn't think of bringing it up, but I wanted to at least show you guys what he was talking about. So, this is page 67, paragraph 1. Can I actually zoom in if I can? Okay, that's even better. There we go. It says, to connect with an unbeliever is to place yourself on Satan's ground. You grieve the Spirit of God and forfeit His protection. Can you afford to have such terrible odds against you in fighting the battle for everlasting life? So, what he is basically saying is, what, uh, not him, what mm, the message of the Lord, and then what basically he's saying is, exactly she's saying exactly what paul said in the book of second corinthians chapter six and we all know that book in second the second corinthians chapter six um verse 14 well paul says actually i'm not gonna read it i'm not gonna say it i'm going to read it for you guys i'm gonna have to show it to you guys be ye, verse 14, be ye not, what, unequally yoked together with the unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion has light with darkness. So, in other sense, like he was saying, if you are Baptist, marry a Baptist. If you are a Methodist, marry a Methodist. If you are a Satanist, marry a demon. And of course, if you are a Seventh-day Adventist like myself, I should marry a Seventh-day Adventist. But I have a little confession. As I was growing up, guys, I was never interested in marrying a Seventh-day Adventist. Um, I guess because the, the schools that I went to, they were mostly... Uh, Methodist, Baptist, there were some Seventh-day Adventists, but I never knew if they were actually Seventh-day Adventists, unless they actually mentioned that, because I didn't go to an actual Seventh-day Adventist school as, as I was growing up. The only Adventist school I've ever been to was in my college years. Only one Adventist school I've ever been to. So, me and a Seventh-day Adventist woman, that was never the question. I wasn't ever interested until I got to the to the US. Now, uh, right now, I I meet more Seventh Day Adventist girls around me in my schools, in my churches, and so now I'm more inclined to um, getting a Seventh Day Adventist wife. Actually, my girlfriend is a Seventh Day Adventist. So. Now, I also know for a fact that 
this verse in um, in uh, in Second Corinthians, it doesn't mean that if I were to marry a Seventh Day Adventist girl, woman, uh, a Seventh Day Adventist woman, that it would mean that I have married an equally yoked person, because even in within the church, there are some Jezebels, there are some Delilah, there are some of Satan's daughters even within the church. So, I think that's why he's going to say something very important because just marrying a person of your own faith doesn't mean you guys are equally yoked. But, let me keep on be quiet and let him cook. If you're an Adventist, come on, finish my words. Marry an Adventist. A good one. A good one. <laughs> a good one. I tell you. Uh, well, let me not get on that anymore. All right. So my counsel to you, wait on the Lord. Listen to these words of mine. Marriage reveals what courtship conceals. I think that also is true. Um, in courtship, it's very easy, you know, oh, that's all lovey-dovey. And then when it comes to the marriage part, then it's like it's a whole different ballgame. And so just because you had a great boyfriend doesn't mean you're going to be a great husband. Just because you had a great girlfriend doesn't mean she's going to be a great wife or a great wife and mother, or a great fa husband and father if you're a woman. So, even in the courtship part, there will be certain red flag. If you're not paying attention, you're going to overlook them. But, my bad, let me, keep, let me keep quiet and let him keep talking. The reality of marriage dissolves the fantasies of courtship. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to a man who's always counseling couples. I'm no expert. I'm simply telling you what I have experienced. I can't tell you how many ladies have said to me, this is not the man I courted. Yeah. Yes, he is. <laughs> but ladies don't kill me. Ladies have this capacity for hoping that a lion will become a lamb. It does not work. <laughs> Are you with me? Lions do not become lambs. An abusive boyfriend will most likely be an abusive husband. Let me, let me stop right here real quick. So, a lion in reality cannot become a lamb. But Jesus is both the lamb of God and the lion of the tribe of, of Judah. So, in a spiritual sense, with Jesus in your life, even if you are a lion, by having Jesus in your life, he can transform you to become like a lamb. But on your own, good luck. Because that is going to happen. <laughs> once is enough. Something shouldn't happen once. Trust God to find you a partner. Do not make the search for a partner a God. Some, let me pick on ladies again, because that's what I've observed. Some ladies are so obsessed with getting a husband, it becomes a God. It affects every other area of their lives. They can't eat, they can't sleep, they can't drink, they can't find a book of Revelation. You know, it's just, <laughs> they're so obsessed with this thing. I need a man. I need a husband. No, 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 no. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Put the matter before God. Obey God. You will be shocked because you are his daughter and he wants what's best for you. He'll find you a husband like Jesus. Come on, say amen. Mm -hmm. Don't go look. By the way, there for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. You don't go looking. Men go looking. Not you. 
So please, <laughs> now let me leave that alone. I, <laughs> I tell you, ah, we bring trouble on ourselves and then we go crying to people, help me. All right, all right, all right. Actually, this is um, um, something that is so true that actually happened. But, um, you know, when he mentioned that about the um, God will give you a husband like Jesus Christ, I would, I'm kind of hoping we would get to that point. But from what I'm seeing in this dating world and dating scene, even within the church, the women are not interested in men that are godlike because they they think they are uh, he's too nice, you know. So, I I'm hoping. Well, hey, you know what? I'm gonna leave that part alone too. But let me get right here into this one, guys. The story of Samson. You remember the story of Samson? Yes. It's not just a woman thing, it's also a man thing. Verse 1, And Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. Philistines, And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I, I have seen a woman in Timnah and of the daughters of Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. Then his father and mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren? Or let's say, as a Seventh-day Adventist, it's like me saying, I'm not a Catholic woman or a Baptist woman, Methodist. Actually, most of the women that I've liked in the past, they were Catholics, Baptist, Methodist, not a Seventh-day Adventist. Rarely I, may, I have uh, liked a Seventh-day Adventist in the past. It's like me saying, yeah, I met this Catholic woman, and they were telling me, is there never a woman among the daughters of your seventh Adventist brethren or among all my, our people that thou goest to a wife of the uncircumcised Philistine? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. Now, most things about feelings. If it feels good, I want to do it. But sometimes, not every time it feels good means it's a good thing. So, guys, I'm not going to make it too long. I wanted to give you all the quick stories of Samson and think about how it ended for Samson. It's, a book, it's actually Judges chapter 14 and 15 and so on. Read that story and find out if it is not a better deal to ask God to tell you who you should marry. And again, don't forget if you like the video, click that like button and the subscribe button on your way out so you can be alert when I put new videos on this channel. But, guys, let's not lose hope. God will give you what you are looking for, know what you really want, what you need. And so, bring him before God, pray about it, and let him tell you who you need to choose, or whether you're a man or you're a woman. This is the Open Bell TV. Put your comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any question, put it there, and I will make a video about it as soon as, I, as possible. Until then, bye for now.